How do ham sticks compare against Wolf River coils? We get a nice email. And how the heck can we make an antenna using zero solder this time on Mailbag Monday? What is happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to KMRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email at KMRD at iCloud.com. Guys, we got uh, three great questions today, so let's dive right in. This first one is just a nice little letter that I got uh, from Ben S. He writes, Thank you, Mike, for your videos. They got me motivated to become a ham radio operator. That is tremendous. Got my tech in April of 2021, studied and got my general December 12th of 2022, and just did a POTA activation today at Kilo 2412. Uh, he did hunting, doing park to park. That's great. So he did. Uh, he was at the park, and he just hunted 10, uh, 10 activators from the park. That's great. You, you can do park to parks that way. There's nothing wrong with that. My wife did the video of getting uh, longest HF contact so far. That's awesome. And he even included a picture. So there he is operating. There you are, Ben. You're YouTube famous now, and looks like he's got uh, uh, Yesu 891, maybe a BioNO battery, and I assume he's using the Hammers app for logging. That is fantastic, Ben. Thanks so much for writing, and congratulations on your general, and congrats on your first POTA activation. I love those. That just warms me down in the cockles of my heart, doesn't it? Next, we have a question about antennas. Hi, Mike. A bit late to the party, but uh, I would like to say, uh, how would you say the MFJ single band ham sticks compare to something like a Wolf River coil mounted on a mag mount on the roof of a car? With the Wolf River coils, you wouldn't need a separate ham stick for each band you wish to operate on. Thanks. And this was a, a comment pulled from YouTube on my antenna review for the MFJ ham stick. So great question. You're, you're not far off in either one. So here's a ham stick for 20 meters. And basically what these are, you have a coil of wire going all the way up this fiberglass outer part until you come to your, uh, your whip, okay? So very compact, very inexpensive, very easy to set up, and it's probably hard to see on camera, but you'll notice that little black mark right there. That is where, when I put it right to the tip there, I know that every time I take this out, I'm tuned up. So very, very fast. All you have to do is unscrew these. They have a 3 8 by 24 thread, so you can unscrew that from the mount. So this is for 20 meters if I wanted to change bands. Just unscrew this, put another one on, pull the whip out to the little black mark that I made there. I'm back in business. So you have a loaded vertical with, oh, this is probably maybe a, a four-foot uh, whip there or radiating element. Okay, I'm just guessing. All right. A Wolf River Coils, you have this coil. So this is the Silver Bullet Mini. This will do 40 through 6 meters. They also have a Silver Bullet 1000 that's a bit taller that can go all the way down to 80 meters. And the principle is the same. So you have this coil of wire that's going to add your inductance. And this collar slides up and down for you to tune it. And it comes with a collapsible whip. This is the, the stock one that, that came with uh, the Silver Bullet 1,000. I, I forget exactly how tall it is, but certainly much, much taller than the whip for the uh, ham stick. So right away, just because you have a longer radiating element, you're going to have a little bit of an advantage there. Now the compromise, this is going to take a little while longer to, to retune. Not much, but some, uh, because you have to slide this collar up and down. Now, some folks will, will mark uh, on the coils with a Sharpie, like what band is, is where. I've not done that. I just use an analyzer and slide it up and down, and then you kind of turn it to fine tune it. And generally, within a couple minutes, you can, you can get a very, very good match. On a car, your car acts as a very good ground plane. I've had great success with both of these. The one reason I would say the Wolf River Coils is going to perform slightly better, and, and now I, I kind of want to go out in the field and do some testing on this because this is purely hypothesis at this point, but it makes sense. With the Wolf River Coils, this is where you screw in your whip, okay? So it comes with a whip, but maybe I want to use a longer whip. With the hamstick, you're kind of just stuck with whatever you have, okay? 
With the Wolf River coils, we can change out to say this MFJ 1979. This is a 17 foot whip. And actually, if you fully extend this, you might need to shorten it a little bit. This is already resonant on 20 meters. Uh, so typically what I'll do is, a lot of times I'll just use this whip. And if you wanna go on, on higher frequencies, you can just shorten it. So you kinda don't even need this coil. Uh, or you could use the coil, you'd, you'd be tapped really way up at the top, you might need to shorten the length of this. But you have more radiating element. More radiating element is always gonna be a better thing. So in that regard, I would say the Wolf River coils is gonna, is gonna be better than the ham stick. Pretty much in every regard I really would, uh, but they're very, very similar. Now in terms of cost, if you buy all of the ham sticks that are gonna, you know, from 40 through six or 40 through 10, whatever, you're pretty much gonna be in, in the same ballpark as buying a Wolf River coil. So it's just a matter of, do you want one thing to do them all? Or do you want, say, five things to do them all? That's really the difference. Hope that helps, and thanks so much for writing in. Great question. This next question comes from the comments in my 10 meter, $10 DIY dipole. I'll post a link up here. And uh, this viewer is commenting, hello, great video, thank you. I've been thinking about getting my tech license and the 10 meter content you and Ham Radio Crash Course are putting out right now is a big part of what has me so interested. That's fantastic. I always tune into your Tech Tuesdays streams even uh, if I can't watch them live, I appreciate that. Unfortunately, I live in a ninth story high rise apartment with no windows and no balcony and can't drive. So actually getting on the air will be a challenge. I'm looking into options to remotely deploy an antenna. The lack of ventilation and excess of carpet in every room means learning to solder is also not really something I can do safely right now. I'd be interested in any homebrew designs that do not require soldering, maybe something with screw terminals. So that's fantastic. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate that. And I'm sure Josh says thank you as well. Uh, as far as soldering, I, I feel you. Uh, it, it can be a fire hazard. Uh, you can take it outside. I just want to point that out. But this question really had me thinking, what can we do to build an antenna that requires zero solder? I think I found out the solution. So let's head over to the bench. Let's try and build one. All right, now the absolute easiest way to do this is to simply get one of these little connectors. You can get these at any of the major ham festivals. You can get them online. It's just a BNC to uh, binding post or banana plug, whatever you want to call them. They come, this is a BNC female. This is probably the version I would use, uh, but they also come in BNC male. And you might need to get an adapter like this that's a SO239 to BNC. So you can adapt that, and then you can plug your coaxial cable in and be on the air. You can throw a little zip tie in these holes if you need to make a little hanger or something to get it up in a tree with a rope or, or on a mast or something like that. And the way these work, you just unscrew these guys here and I'm using some 18 gauge speaker wire. Don't focus much on the gauge. I pump 100 watts through 26 gauge speaker wire, no problem. Uh, so don't focus too much on how thick or thin your speaker wire is, but we're simply gonna strip a little bit of the wire and insert it through these holes. Now you do need to be careful. Uh, you get a speaker wire that will actually fit through these holes here. Go ahead and tighten that down and then we can repeat with the other side here. Stick that guy in. And we have a dipole in about a minute. Now, of course, we need to tune this, but you could just get one of these, make different lengths of wire, and uh, have different bands. So, you know, this is really short wire, maybe make for 10 meters, 12 meters, whatever you get the point. But that is a solderless dipole. But in the spirit of amateur radio, I want to show something even easier to build. Maybe not easier, but with parts that we can source locally. You can get all this stuff at your local hardware store, uh, you know, Ace Hardware, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. So let's show you how to build one with stuff that doesn't need any special materials. So the only thing you're gonna have to get, I wanna make an antenna that's not dependent on an entire run of coax, meaning I don't want a whole run of coax tied up for one antenna. So to do this solderlessly, I, I kind of wrapped my head around this for a couple days after reading your question, and I came up with this idea. You're gonna need to get a little jumper like this, because even crimp connectors for PL259s and SO239s, you're still often gonna need to solder the center pin. There are crimp ones, but eh, 
let's stick with this. So we're gonna need a little jumper, and this way we can use whatever coax we want. We're gonna use a barrel connector like this, so we can turn one side of this into NSO239 and plug our coaxial cable into that. We're also gonna use a couple of these male quick connects you can find at the hardware store, auto parts store, whatever. I prefer Ace Hardware for mine. I just like the quality of these. So we'll need a couple females and a couple males. Now you may be asking, couldn't we use power poles for this? And I gave that some thought. But power poles, um, you're gonna need the special crimper to get them all together. So this one time, I'm gonna not use power poles. So we also are gonna use our 88 cent cutting board from Walmart. So let's see how we do this. So I kind of want to make a T out of this. So, you know, probably something like that there, that there, come in from the middle here, probably something like that. We're not going for pretty, okay. So this is what I want here. Square that up and then we'll drill some holes for some strain relief for the wire, the radiating element. And then I'm gonna drill some holes for some strain relief for the coax there. So let's go cut this out. And now we have this. Next, we're gonna drill some holes. These are gonna be pilot holes and then I'm gonna make these bigger so the coax will fit. Slipper little suckers. Next, we're gonna cut one of these ends off, just like that. Now, we can wind it through our insulator jobby guy here. Okay. We're, gonna need, we're not gonna need this much. We'll, we'll end up pulling some of it back, but we wanna have some room out here to play with. Then we can go ahead and we wanna gently cut the jacket off without stripping the braid. Just like that. Then we get the fun task of unbraiding this. We wanna separate all this. Maybe get some tweezers or something. Just get all this unbraided. All right, now we can kind of pull it all to one side. Start twisting it all together. Now we can go ahead and strip our center insulator, the dielectric. Again, being very careful so as to not lose any strands. There we are. Now we're gonna crimp on two female or male. We're gonna use both, but whichever, if you want female on this side or male on this side, it doesn't matter. I'm going with female. I'm gonna cut these down a little bit. You can see I've got about a quarter inch or so that I can trim off just to tidy it up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll add my connector. I'm just using some Klein uh, crimping tool here. And we will crimp that down okay and we'll do the same thing for the braid side we'll go ahead and cut most of that off i want to have a little bit of wiggle room slide that guy on there crimp that and if you were better than me you'd probably do that so these are even but that's okay now we can go ahead get rid of some of this Excess slack to about there. All right, and just for giggles, let's take a zip tie just to hold that part down like that. Now we can feed our speaker wire through going from the bottom and down through the top. And it doesn't have to be speaker wire, you can use whatever you want. And again for this side. And we'll go ahead and strip off 
a little bit of wire from both of these. And we'll crimp on the male version of the Quick Connect. Done and done. And now we can plug these into one another like that. And we can get rid of our excess slack here. And now you have a solderless dipole. And now the only thing you have to do is go outside and tune it up and you should be on the air with no solder on your dipole. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for writing in. That really was a good question. I had a lot of fun with that. And guys, if you have questions for me, don't be afraid. Shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. And uh, in the subject, just put Mailbag Monday, and maybe you will have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at k8mrd, and you can support me on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash k8mrd radio stuff. And until next time, we'll see you again on another episode of k8mrd radio stuff. Three guys.